All right, cookware junkies, Jacob Cordero, Nathan Crane, we've got the Vegematic, the Slice-O-Matic, the... We don't have the Vegematic. Oh, but it still makes julienne fries. We got uh, the manual food processors, we've got uh, the mandolins, and we've got the weird kind that uh, jam a vegetable down through a grid. I'm pretty sure we're in over our heads in this one. I'm probably getting cut. Right. We're gonna we're gonna take all these through their paces and see which ones, if any, are a good thing you might want to have in your kitchen. Okay, we're back after dicing, chopping, slicing. Nobody got a finger cut no, off. All ten fingers. That's right. So we had a chance to put them through their paces. What did we learn? Well, uh, they're not very good. Okay. Uh, so, so all right, let's go into a little more detail. Uh, we've got a few different styles here. Uh, first, we have the manual food processors here. Uh, this is kind of like uh, your full-size cuisine art, except instead of running electrically, uh, you, say, push down a plunger or turn a crank. Uh, and it rotates these spinny blades around in that. And, well, it rotates those spinny blades around in there where they knock your vegetables around, uh, bash them into weird sized pieces, mm. and you wind up with, uh, say, some onions that are cut, that are in big giant pieces and little tiny inedible shards. Yeah, so basically every time we would spin this thing, it throws everything out to the sides. So, say for something like garlic, what yeah. would happen when we when we did the garlic? Is it just kind of hit it a couple of times through to the side? Oh, yeah, we would we, we wind up with like half cloves uh, sitting around in there. Yeah, and so we uh, used the black and decker uh, yep. for the garlic, and what happened is the blades never reached uh, the garlic once it touched the the yeah. outside. Yeah, the blade doesn't make it all the way down to the bottom. The blade doesn't make it all the way to the outside, and that's where all the garlic ended up. Okay. Uh, there was one halfway bright spot in these. Uh, this one here is real little. It runs on this uh, weird sort of lawnmower string pole, uh, but it's it's small and the blades actually make uh, contact pretty much everywhere. So this one did a reasonable job of cutting up our onions, tomatoes, and garlic. Uh, it's a little awkward, but it did its job, which is more than I can say for all the other uh, manual food processors here. So were there any other food processors here that were worth um, owning? Nope. Okay. Uh, they're all they're all pretty bad. But hold on, this one also separates egg yolk. Oh yeah, yes. that's that's very important. Uh, so does the egg. And hold on, it comes with a bunch of extra accessories. Oh good, it's got all those attachments. Uh, this one here uh, is the extra special storage nightmare because it comes with all of these attachments and has no place to put them. Uh, so you get to devote an entire cabinet to a thing that really doesn't work. Yeah, you know what was surprising about this one is while it didn't do its job as a processor, it did pretty well when it came to slicing. We did potatoes yeah, and right. uh, did slice the potato pretty well uh, considering what, what its job actually was. Yeah. Uh, so our next, the next kind we looked at are, were slicers. Uh, these, uh, you have sort of the mandolin style here where the idea is you take a uh, blade guard here so that your hand does not contact the extremely sharp blade. You attach your food to it and then you roll it down through the blade. So you make, you make your slices of food uh, or you can dial in another uh, extra set of blades here for say cutting french fries, which we did. Uh, for these, eh, the best was actually probably this guy right here. The I'm surprised. I figured this one would have been our our winning pick here uh, with that mandolin style. You almost can't go wrong with it. Uh, however, yeah, uh, this is the uh, this is the absolute classic. It was the one I picked to, to uh, make the best fries. That's the top seller. Yeah, that is the top seller. But wow, I you know I got I loaded up a potato on there. Mm. Uh, I tried to run it through there with all with all my strength, and it just got jammed up. And fortunately, I did not get cut, but it looked like it was. I was about to for a while. That was one of the surprising things with it, is the strength and control you actually need to work any of these mandolin style ones. Yeah, to, uh, to, push, to push a potato through one of these, you have to really push. Right, and then of course your wrist is sliding you know, fairly close to that blade, and I think we would have liked a, a better guard on the Mueller. Yeah, um, the, yeah, the exact the structure of the guard is always, is always a little tricky because it has to be small enough that you can actually use it, 
but big enough that it actually keeps your hand away from the many, many blades. Now the highlight, I think, of one of our tests was when we were using this mandolin style one, the vertical one, for the potatoes. Oh, this was the absolute best when it came to, when it came to cutting the potatoes. This is the once for all, uh, instead of it works the other direction, you, there's a feed chute here, and you push the blade down through. Uh, all your stuff falls into the hopper. We threw a potato in here and just slap, 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 uh, 20 seconds, and it made perfect fries. Yeah, uh, they were absolutely beautiful. Now, the only problem with this is, is cleaning. Uh, when you get in here, there's a whole bunch of, bla of blades. This is not dishwasher safe, and you have to figure out a way to clean out all of these blades. It comes with a handy dandy brush. Yeah, they call it the once for all. You use it once, uh, you discover how much trouble it's going to be to clean it, and that's all. Now, this one came in kind of at the top of the price point at about 40 bucks, I believe. Yeah, that's a, that's a lot to pay to okay. uh, be making to be making perfect fries. So I guess ideal if you plan on making a lot of fries often. Sure, if you're if you're going to be making up big batches of fries all the time, uh, you might really like this thing because those fries came out great. Uh, then we had a third kind of cutter here that I can't even figure out what the name is. Uh, we're calling it a grid chopper. The idea is you're going to uh, put it put like say your onion on top of this grid. Uh, push it down with the handle and you get diced onion. Mm. Okay, so I remember you doing it a couple of times and it looked like you were really getting over that thing to try to get those those onions to crush through. Yes, uh, okay. so cutting cutting half an onion uh, with say the OXO uh, took all of my not inconsiderable weight to cut it to cut an onion. That thing is well, you're not going to cut your hand on that blade because it's not sharp at all. It's not even when you feel it. It's not even clear which side is the top and which side is the bottom. Uh, now that's not the worst part, though. The worst part is trying to clean these things. Uh, when it came when it came to cleaning these out, you have to clean out the, both the grid of blades themselves. Now on that one, you can jam your fingers in there because they're not sharp at all. Uh, the ones that actually are sharp, you have to uh, find a way to get in all of the all of the crannies of the blades. Yeah, now the OXO had that handy, you know, remover yes. so that you can actually, you know, get a quick clean on these where I think the yeah. shed home, uh, we ended up getting an onion pretty much lodged in the grid part of the top of that one. Yeah, the, the, push, the pusher grid is even harder to clean than the, than the blades because you have to get in here. Uh, they all come with these little tiny cones to pick them out but that's not so good. The OXO does a really smart thing of having that uh, liner in there that lets you pull, lets you just rip it right off. Yeah, and, and the grids weren't really that easy to clean. I, yeah. I thought I cleaned them once or twice and then went back and looked and I noticed that I missed a bunch of different, I mean, there's so many angles and corners in here that it's, it's practically impossible to clean this. It's a dishwasher job for sure. And uh, that's definitely the downside with the all for, or once for all. Uh, because you can't necessarily load that thing in a dishwasher and it's got tons of angles. Yep. So that takes us through pretty much pretty much all the styles here. So did you like any of the uh, grid style uh, cubers? I mean, is it something where you feel like there's a, you know, enough of a, it does enough well uh, to warrant a spot in your cupboard? Well, uh, the one that probably worked the best was the uh, full, the full star models here. Uh, we have one that does just the grid chopper. Uh, that goes into a gla into a glass dish. It seems to be well built. Uh, the design is generally good. Uh, we also have the larger model here that comes with every attachment under the sun. Uh, let me pull in the attachment tray. So you get every one of these things right here for every conceivable kind of slicing or juicing or spiralizing or this, that, and the other thing. But it did an acceptable job of dicing up the onion. But here's the problem. Uh, you can't just grab, it, grab an onion and throw it in there. You have to first uh, cut, the, cut the ends off. You've got to cut it in half and you've got to peel it. Mm. And so if you're going to do that, you already have a knife and a cutting board out. It's sitting right there. You've got you to use them. You've got to clean them. At this point, do you really want to haul out uh, something like this that is also a pain to clean? Now I gotta say, there was a couple of times when we were cutting and chopping and that was pretty fun. 
Then came the cleaning part. Oh, you know, the cutting and chopping was pretty good, but wow, that cleaning was horrible. That was the straw that broke the camel's back. I, I was ready to say that this was maybe a good thing. You know, say you want to say you want to pound through 20 pounds of onions. Uh, you're doing a giant batch of salsa for a big family thing. You know, it, it could be that could be a lot better than dicing, uh, but. Boy, oh boy, I do not want to clean these things ever again. So what about the, the kids? Is this something you can uh, trust the kid with and uh, have them chop up some onions and potatoes? Not if you like the kids still having their fingers. Mm. Uh, pretty much every one of these that actually works, that is to say not the manual food processors, involves you putting your fingers right up against a blade. Uh, say the mandolins here, you've got, you've got uh, all these sticky-outy blades right there that you have to have your fingers right up on. Uh, that's true of all the slicers. Uh, the only one that you might be able to uh, hand to a kid is the grid choppers, but I don't know that they have the force to actually do some do any cutting. Whether you're cleaning them or using them, your hands are going to be right up against blades. I'd rather have it be a knife blade that I know how to control. So maybe teach the kids how to use a knife? I'd say. <laughs> okay. Um, so, do we have any winners here? If there, if I were going to call any winners here, I would make it the Chefin. Uh, this one here, it's a little funky, but it actually does its job. Uh, you can do some, you can do some light chopping in here. Uh, it comes out, uh, you, you know, usable for uh, the average recipe. Uh, it's not too hard to clean. It's cheap. It's compact. And hey, you could, you could give this one to a kid and have them, and have them go to town on it. Uh, so I would say that's reasonably good. Uh, if you want to do a lot of if you want to do a lot of slicing, uh, like say if you do want to make your own uh, potato chips or French fries, the uh, once for all here works great. But you can clean it. I won't. Uh, outside of that, I don't see anything here that uh, I would want to have in my own kitchen. And nothing, uh, anything to say about the uh, thirteen and one with all of its amazing features? Uh, wow, those features are amazing. Uh, you know, it works well enough. Uh, if you want to use this thing all the time, uh, have at it. Okay. You know, it's it's well it's well made, but it's I don't think it's worth it. So uh, with that disappointing conclusion, uh, this has been Cookware Junkies. I'm Nathan. This is Jacob. Uh, like and subscribe, and maybe come back and watch us review something better. The straw that broke the horses, or the that's where the that's where that thing happened. <laughs> yep, yep, uh, that was that was the straw that broke the camel's back.